Hey everyone, it's Katie. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my second son Oliver's birth story. I'll warn you now, this is a labor and delivery story. And so it's going to contain some things about labor and delivery that some people may not want to hear. So this is your warning. Let's get into it. I was approximately 37 weeks pregnant and I went to my weekly OB appointment. Prior to this point, I had decided to have a C-section. For those of you that don't know, I have Crohn's disease. So having a C-section has always been an option for me. At this appointment, we discovered that the baby, we didn't know if he was a boy or a girl at the time, so we discovered that the baby was breached. He was actually head down prior to this, but had flipped again and was now feet first. All the more reason to have a C-section. Only 14% of babies are attempted to be born naturally when they are breached. I received my paperwork in the mail and my pre-surgery appointment was scheduled for December 14th and my surgery being scheduled for December 19th. December 14th came and I was at home getting caught up on church book work when I received a call from Daniel's father. He told me that Granny, his mom, had passed away that morning. When I hung up the phone, I basically curled into a ball and sobbed like a baby. I'm talking like full on convulsion crying. She was one of my best friends and she was one of my most favorite people in the entire world. I cried all morning. At 2 p.m. I headed out for my pre-surgery uh, clinic appointment and everything went great. I was ready to meet my son or my daughter on December 19th. On the way home from the hospital, I didn't feel very well. I made it home. We were planning to meet Daniel's dad, his aunt, and one of his cousins to discuss funeral arrangements. While they were at our house, my cramps became a little bit stronger. I told Daniel's cousin that I just thought they were Braxton Hicks, um, just kind of the normal pains that I'd been feeling up until this point during the pregnancy. After they left, I started timing them, and they were about five minutes apart and getting stronger. I told Daniel we weren't going to make it to his niece's birthday party that evening because I was in labor. He called his dad to come and get Victor and packed his bag while I packed mine. We were out the door in about 30 minutes. I had to stop on the way out to the car once or twice because the contractions were that bad. We called my parents on the drive and they were going to meet us at the hospital. As we drove, the contractions were becoming more frequent and a lot more painful. I tried to stay really quiet so that I wouldn't freak Daniel out. He asked me if they were getting better. They were not. As we got closer to the hospital, it became louder and louder. Daniel was driving as fast as he could while trying to reassure me that I was okay. Next contraction came and I was pressing my hands and my feet and my elbows down into the car as hard as I could. Then pop and gush. I said, oh no, I just bled everywhere. To which Daniel replied, your water broke. It's just your water, it's just your water. You're okay, you're okay. That's when it got crazy and it all just kind of became a blur. So Daniel kept giving me words of encouragement while I kept screaming. I had the urge to push and we were not at the hospital yet. I knew the feeling of wanting or needing to push. I had just done it 15 months ago with Victor and I was terrified. I prayed and prayed and I swore a little too. We arrived at Emerge. Daniel wheeled me in while I screamed. The registration lady wanted us to do paperwork and I yelled at her, I want to push. To which she replied, oh, okay, come on in. Daniel didn't know where labor and delivery was and he couldn't hear the lady trying to tell him how to get there because I was screaming so loud. So he covered my mouth <laughs> and, and let 
listen to her tell him where to go. He and a security guard wheeled me up to the second floor. I screamed the whole time for someone to help me and that my baby was breached. The whole time I was in that wheelchair, the only relief I could get was when I would dig my elbows into the arms of the chair. When they got me into the room, they needed to get my clothes off and get me onto the bed, but I wouldn't move. They said the only way that they could help me was if I listened and lifted up my arms. They stripped me down, got me onto the bed, and they could see feet. My nurses had one rule for me, do not push. I tried my very best, and finally the emergency room doctor showed up to deliver my baby. Daniel told me afterward that during this time, it seems like no one really knew what to do. They just sort of stood there. A breech baby means a section, but there was no OB, and with feet sticking out of me, a section was not an option. I had a few more contractions, and they gave me some laughing gas to calm me down. However, I wouldn't breathe. Laughing gas does not work if you don't breathe. My nurse grabbed my face like this <laughs> and yelled at me to open my eyes and look at her. She helped me to breathe through them. She then said that I might be able to push at my next contraction. Well, it came and she yelled, do not push, do not push. And I pushed. I felt my baby come out, but he didn't come out all the way. I could feel him wiggling while he was stuck half in and out of my body. I began to panic, but something inside of me said, it's okay, Katie, just push again. You got this, just push again. So I pushed again and he came flying out. He was here and he was okay. The OB then showed up and stitched me up. After they stuck a bunch of pads and bed liners underneath me and covered me with several heating blankets because I was vibrating in shock, I guess, they left me alone. Daniel had gone to move our car, which we left running <laughs> right outside of the emergency room door for the last 45 minutes. Luckily, no one stole it. My parents then walked in. My mom said, how are you feeling? I said, good mom, it's a boy. She was confused and excited all at the same time. And she said, I thought your belly was smaller. My nurse later that evening got me showered and cleaned up. And she told me that when that emergency room doctor left my room, he looked at the nurses and said, I need a beer. I'm so thankful that the Lord came through that roller coaster of a day. Did you know that normally they don't allow footling breech babies to be delivered vaginally? There are too many risks of complications. I'm glad I didn't really know that stat prior to going into labor because I would have been quite a bit more scared. But I'm so glad that my body knew what to do and that God was with us every step of the way. So thanks so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to leave a comment down below. If you are new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, my friends, bye.